everybody, Owen Wagler back here with Wood Dozer Mills and today we're in the garage and we're going to show you how to replace the photo eye on this ready heater 100,000 BTU. So the tools you're going to need is, you don't have to use an impact driver, but I've got the impact driver. You're just basically going to need a 5 16 socket. As you can see there, you're going to want some cutters and a pair of pliers just in case and the new photo eye that we just bought it came in the mail this morning so now I'm gonna show you how to put it on so when you get the heater I have it all took apart already but this cover goes on here for covering the electrical you're just gonna take that off with the four five sixteenths bolts that are in each corner of the heater okay and there's a plastic guard that goes on the back of the heater um, you can take that off but that comes off with this top piece the metal cover this is what covers the spark plug all the inside components of the heater so you take it out with the six bolts that hold it on there's a bolt on the front middle and rear on each side so we just slip the cover off and set it aside and now you can see you got the fan motor you want to make sure that spins free while you're opening the cover um, so this is the spark plug there's your old photo eye as you can see down there underneath the spark plug there's your fuel lines we have replaced both of them because they were both cracked when we got it and your air filter we replaced it and this is the part that burns the kerosene and so we're running straight kerosene on this heater but I've seen where people mix it with gasoline and stuff I'm not sure if that works or not yet but in the future we'll let you know if that works so now we're gonna get start by getting the old photo eye out of the hole and you just basically twist it and it'll slide right out shouldn't be too hard but sometimes they get stuck up in that hole it takes a little bit of pulling some people like to take this whole thing off the heater but I'm going to show you, you don't have to do that. Twist it and pull it nice and easy. And it'll slide right out of there. As you can see, I'm just kind of twisting it. I'm about three quarters of the way there. And then you can just pull it out. It's just a piece of rubber, but sometimes they can get brittle. And then it's got a little eye inside of it that senses if it's got a flame or not. But that's just enough to make it not run. So we start, as you can see, there's a blue and white lead coming out of the photo eye. Which goes down out of the outside of the heater down to the electrical as we follow it. And... So the blue wire is connected here, so we're going to start one at a time. We're just going to disconnect the yellow wire nut, unhook it, set it aside for right now, but don't lose it. Unconnect the old blue wire. I'm just starting with blue, you don't have to. And then remember where it goes. So I'm going to set the old blue wire aside. Then you can take your new photo eye and clip the ends off of it. So the two old ends, you can see, I'm just going to take them and clip them off level with each other. And that's it. You can save the terminals, but they're not really good for anything anymore. So we're going to get a wire stripper and strip the wires back about a half an inch. So in the tool chest, we got our wire strippers right here. Whoops. And you get the photo eye. 
And then you can strip the wires. You do these one at a time. So you see here, I'm just going to grab the wire. I'm going to get you a good view here. One at a time. Stick it in the slot that it fits the best. Um, I'm going to go one smaller. And then just pull and strip the wire. They have a heat shield inside their wires, so they're a little bit thicker than a normal. Just pull till it's stripped, one stripped, and two. Set your wire strippers aside. What you'll have when you're done stripping it is this. Two stripped wires. And they're both blue. I don't really, it doesn't really matter which hole you stick it in. Because they're both just leads. Um, so these are both blue on the new photo eye. Those are white and blue. But it doesn't really matter which one you stick it in. As long as it works. So you stick it in that old hole that we had the others come out of. Um, stick it down to the electrical. We can go ahead and stick the new photo eye inside that hole. There's a hole down in there where the old photo eye came out. You just basically slip it in there and push. This one should go in a lot easier than the other one went out because it's new. And then you get it seated in there and that's what it should look like. Now we pull our wires and we get our wire nut. Then we're going to grab this wire that was stripped already from factory and then we hook up our blue lead. It's just that simple. So you want to twist it around that old wire and here we go. Twist it around it really good and tight and then get your wire nut. Twist your wire nut on there. You want to make sure the wire nut's tight when you do this. If it's loose, it's just going to come loose when it's running the heater and it's going to make a big mess and not run the heater. It's just going to basically stop the heater. Like it would when the photo eye goes bad, it stops it after so many seconds of running. So now we're going to take this white where the white lead comes out. We're going to take it, the wire nut off of it. Take off the white lead, which was top. Whoop. Set your wire nut aside. Don't lose any of these wires. So tie those together. Then you can add the blue one. Make sure you get these the same as the other tight wrapped around each other you don't want these coming loose grab your wire nut whoops the wire slid you just want to make sure you get the wire around it stick the wire nut on it make sure you get it threading on there good push the wire nut down and get it to thread you want it to thread on these wires. This wire nut. Oh, I'm losing my wire nut here, guys. This blue wire. Make sure it's wrapped around it again. Tie the wire nut tight.
Now that your wire nut's tight, you can stick it back in. Now we're going to pull the old photo eye out of the hole. You just basically pull it out. Boom, there's your old photo eye. The rubber's really hard and brittle. It cracks. When I squeeze on it, it cracks. Old photo eye, that's why we're not using it anymore. We got our new one installed. It looks brand new. So we're going to neatly shove our wires back up in there. And put the cover on it when we get that done. So there we go. Now we're going to take these four nuts out, or the bolts. And we're going to put them back in with the cover. So there's four of them again. There's size 5 16 nut driver. Or you can use a socket or a wrench. But I like using the impact driver. Because it makes stuff so much quicker. So we slip our cover back on. Whoops. We line up the holes. Number one. Goes in that hole there. See? It's lined up. You thread it in there by hand. Make sure it threads. You don't want to cross thread things. And you just basically thread it in. Moving on to this top. We just stick it in the hole and thread. So, this is basically all there is to replacing the photo eye. I didn't show you the process of taking it all apart, but it's very simple. Just like putting it all back together. So we got them all threaded in a little bit. Now we take our impact and hit them on. You just want to go about one impact or two. You just don't want to over because these things will drip the nuts right out. So we got the cover back on. Make sure it's tight. It's tight. So now we can take our bolts out of the sides. And we're going to put the top back on. So there's six bolts. You can just take them out by hand. These don't get very tight when you put them back in. But I like to put my bolts right back in the holes they came out of. That way if one was cross threaded, it stays in the same cross threaded hole. But also you won't lose the bolts from having it being in the hole. It's a very slick process and works very efficiently for me. That way if somebody's took it apart before and stripped something out, you put the same stripped screw back in the same stripped, stripped hole. Um, but usually you try to replace the strip screw if you can. But some things just thread differently and they work in their own threads. So now we're just going to stick the ready heater cover back on. Stick in the back bolt first. This is a ready heater. I know there's a lot more torpedo heaters out there that'll work. But yeah, you basically just stick the cover back on. And then that's it. So you impact them down. And then you're good to go. Plug it in and it'll work. So thanks again guys. Thanks for watching Wooddozer Mills. Uh, for more content, please subscribe and drop a like down below. Also, don't be afraid to leave a comment if this helped you or not and all that stuff. So, yep, you all have a good one. Stay cool.